Good morning, Severn Church. It is so good to see you today and to be here today as we worship in the house of the Lord. I pray that you're sitting around in your living room with your families once again and preparing to worship the Lord. We thank you for tuning in and may God bless you as you watch the service today. Let's go to God in prayer. Father, thank you for this time we could be here. We thank you, Lord, for the families that are watching the service today. We pray, pray a blessing upon them. Lord, now I just pray for the special music and the message this morning, God, that it might touch our hearts and be acceptable to you. We pray for the sick that's in our community. We pray for those who lost loved ones and be close to them. In Jesus' holy and precious name, amen. At this time, we're going to have our special guest, Ernie. Hello, boys and girls. This is Ernie here this morning. I'm having a terrible time with my hair. There's not a barber shop open anywhere. I've tried to comb it and comb it, it just keeps sticking up. Oh, that's okay. Well, let's do roll call. Okay, children, if you're here, I want you to holler here at the TV set. Okay, Gavin, are you here? Maddie, Chase, Berkeley, Emily, Camden, Michaela and Jackson, and little baby Evie, and Grayson, and Talon, and Haley, and Noah, and Wade, and Taylor, and Boone, and Rudy, and Kinsley, and Braylon, Felicity, Claire, and Summer. All right, is everybody here? I can't hear you. Are you here? Oh, good, 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 good. I was coming up the road today and I was thinking, how do the birds know to make a nest? What do the birds put in a nest? That's right, they put their eggs in a nest. And I wonder, who teaches the fish to swim? Hmm. And I wonder, who teaches the skunks to stink? Whew! Pewee! And I wonder, who teaches the rabbits to run really fast? And who teaches the cows how to give milk? Oop. Who teaches the dogs how to bark? Woo! 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 And who teaches the cats to meow? And I wonder, who taught you how to walk and to talk? And some of you how to read? Yeah, your parents helped and your teachers helped. But you know who takes care of all the animals? God does. That's right, he feeds them every day. And he gives them the knowledge to know how to do things, just like he does for you. So we can praise God because he knows everything and he helps everybody. So anyway, that's our lesson for today. Love you guys. Bye. And now, Severin, we have Sandra Owens and Shirley Hogg singing a special music for us today.
Thank you, Sandra and Shirley. I've got a short message today I'd like to preach to you, and it's called Forgiving Yourself. Forgiving Yourself. Did you know a couple years ago, a product came out, it was called the Disposable Guilt Bag? This is a true story. And here's the instructions on the front. Place the bag over your mouth, take a deep breath, Blow all your guilt inside here, secure the bag, and then dispose of it. Okay, I'm going to try that this morning. All right, all my guilt is in here, and it's all gone. Actually, it didn't work. But they were selling it for $2.50 a piece. So if you're out there today and you want a guilt bag, just give me a call, and I can hook you up for $2.50 a brown bag to get rid of all your guilt. But seriously, many people carry a guilty conscience with them most of their life. And it's something that you did in your past that you're having a really, really hard time to let go. You've already asked forgiveness from God. You've already asked forgiveness from people as applicable. But deep down inside, you still hang on to it, and you refuse to forgive yourself. I talk to people at times about accepting the Lord and coming to know Him. And sometimes their response is, but you don't know what I've done in my life. Well, I will tell you this morning that the Lord doesn't care what you've done in your life in the past. He wants to know what are you going to do now and in the future. So self-forgiveness is a pretty big topic today. I went to Amazon online and put in the words self-forgiveness and I had 5,000 hits. There are 5,000 books and DVDs and all kinds of things out there about how to forgive yourself. But I'll tell you, you will never truly be happy in life until you have moved on, allowed God to work in you, and that you've been able to forgive yourself. And I want to remind you that if you've asked forgiveness from God and it keeps coming back in your life of what you've done in your past, that is not God reminding you. That is Satan reminding you because he wants you to have a life full of guilt and no joy. So the question today is, can you honestly forgive yourself? There may be consequences to sins that you've done in the past, whether it be health related or whether it even be relationships that have been destroyed. But the important thing is, is that you're able to ask forgiveness because our God has said that when I forgive you, I cast that as far as from the east is from the west, and I never remember it anymore. If our God can do that, then why can't we forget the past and move on also? One of the greatest examples in the Bible happened just before Christ was crucified, and I touched on this last week with the Apostle Peter, who was so bold with Christ and said, I will always be there with you. I will stand there with you. I will die with you. And then he denied Christ three times. And the Bible said that he went away weeping after he had done that. Our passage today is found in John chapter 21, beginning with verse 1. So I'll let you get your Bibles. John 21, beginning with verse 1. Now just so you know, Jesus had already appeared to the disciples, but he had some unfinished business to take care of. John chapter 21, beginning with verse 1. Afterward, Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Tiberias. It happened this way. Simon Peter, 
Thomas, Nathaniel from Cana and Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples were together. I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter told them. And they said, well, go with you. we'll go with you. So they went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. And he called out to them, Friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. He said, Throw your net on the right side of the boat, and you will find some. And when they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved, and that would be John, said to Peter, It is the Lord. And as soon as Simon Peter heard him say, It is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him and jumped into the water. The other disciple followed in the boat, towing the net full of fish, for they were not far from shore, about a hundred yards. And when they landed, they saw a fire of burning coals there with fish on it and some bread. And Jesus said to them, Bring some of your fish, You have just caught. And Simon Peter climbed aboard and dragged the net ashore. It was full of large fish, 153 of them. But even with so many, the net was not torn. And Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. And none of the disciples dared ask him, Who are you? They knew it was the Lord. And Jesus came, took the bread, and gave it to them, and did the same with the fish. And you remember another time when Jesus had the bread and the fish when he fed the 5,000. This was now the third time Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. And when they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said, you know I love you. And Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me? And he answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? And he said, Lord, you know all things and you know that I love you. And Jesus said, feed my sheep. And I tell you the truth, when you were younger, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. And Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. Then he said to him, follow me. Let me touch on this just for a minute. Because the Lord told Peter that here is how you are going to die. You are going to be, you will have your arms stretched out just like I did, and you will be crucified because of your faith. Then Jesus said, follow me. The story is is that Peter, when it came time for him to be crucified, told the people, do not crucify me the way Christ was, but crucify me upside down, for I don't deserve to be crucified like Jesus. But let's look at the story here, if you will. The first thing is that Jesus went to the disciples when they were fishing. So why was that important? Because first of all, the disciples went back to their old life. They went back to their old ways after Jesus had died. But Jesus had much more for them to do. And I thank God that we serve a Savior who knew that there was some unfinished business. He knew that he needed to get to Peter and talk to him and restore him. And so he did not go straight to heaven, but he stayed here on earth for 40 days. And he went to Peter, and I got thinking about this, is that when someone does something wrong to us, or hurts us, as Peter hurt Christ, we have a tendency to ignore that person from that point forward. We make a wide berth around them so that we don't have to even speak to them. But our Lord went to them. So why was it important that the Lord told the disciples to throw your net on the other side of the boat? Because we know in Luke chapter 5, and you can read this 
on your own. Then when Jesus went to call Peter to be a disciple, he went to Peter as Peter was fishing. And he asked him, have you caught anything? And Peter said, no. Peter did not know who the Lord was at that moment. And so Jesus told him, put out in deep water and let down your nets for a catch. And Peter said, Master, we've fished all night. and We haven't caught a thing, but because you said it, we will do it. And when he did, there were so many fish that his boats began to sink. And Peter jumped overboard, came to Jesus, and he fell at his knees and said, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. Then Jesus said to Peter, Don't be afraid. From now on you will fish for people. So they pulled up their boats and shore and left everything and followed him. So when Jesus initially called Peter, Peter left everything behind, his boat, his nets, and everything. Now we understand Peter to have been a very wealthy man. And he left everything to follow Jesus. And then when things got going tough with Jesus, what did he do? He went right back where he was. He went right back to his old way. Now in this passage, Jesus takes Peter aside. And I got thinking how awkward that must have been. Because Jesus looks at him and says, Do you love me? Peter could have been waiting for the Lord to chew him out. I was thinking maybe the Lord would have said, Peter, I told you that you were going to deny me nanny, nanny, boo-boo. That's what we said when we were kids. But our Lord didn't do that. Our Lord did not bring up his past. This is important. He didn't say, you denied me three times, so therefore I have to ask you this question. But he asked Peter very specifically, do you love me more than these? Now, what are these? I believe they were the fish and the nets and the boats. Or it could have been, do you love me more than what you love your family and your disciples? And how did he answer? He said, yes, Lord, you know I love you. Now, there's some Greek in here and Hebrew, which I am not a student of. But when Jesus asked him, do you love me? It was that type of agape love, like, do you love God? But Peter answered back, you know, Lord, that I am fond of you. Which is like we would tell somebody, I'll see y'all later now, I love you. Friendship. And then the second time the Lord spoke to him again with that agape love, that, that heavenly love, Peter, do you love me as God? And Peter said, I love you like a brother. And finally the Lord said, i got to get through to you, Peter. Do you truly love me? But at this point, Peter was a little upset. Didn't realize what Jesus was doing. And he said, you know, Lord, that I truly love you. Peter answered back, I love you as the Lord. Why three questions? You probably already figured it out. How many times did Peter deny Christ? Three times. You see what the Lord was doing? He was erasing each one as Peter said, I love you. See, he was still a child of Peter's. Just like you and I, when we mess up, we are still a child of God. He doesn't say nanny, nanny, boo-boo to us and puts us in the corner, but he loves us. I raised two boys. They were just as different as night and day. One was shy, wouldn't talk to anybody, and he wouldn't think about getting in trouble. That would be Aaron. Then I had Adam. Adam never knew a stranger, would try anything. Well, he got a toboggan, one of those round toboggans for Christmas. But we didn't have any snow. We lived in a two-story farmhouse. 
So Adam was about six years old. So he decided he was going to sled down the steps inside the house. So Barbara and I are sitting in the living room. Aaron's playing the floor and we hear a boom, 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 boom. And we jump up and there's Adam at the bottom of the steps, still on his toboggan. And he looks up with a grin and says, that was cool. You know, even though he got in trouble, he's still my child. I still love him very much. There are two ways that people react to sin and their past of what they've done. One way is to excuse it. Make excuses for their behavior. And the other way is to completely ignore it. Peter did not do either one of those. He knew that he had betrayed Christ. He didn't ignore it. He didn't try to argue. And he knew in his mind that he had betrayed our Lord. So I will tell you this morning, my dear friends, as you think about that one thing, that you did in your past that keeps coming up, but you've asked forgiveness. Do like Peter did. Tell the Lord, you know, Lord, I love you. I love you, I love you. And let the Lord take that guilt away from you once and for all. Six-year-old Brandon decided one Saturday morning that he was going to fix his parents' pancakes for breakfast. So he got out the eggs and he got out the milk and he got out the pancake mix and he started making pancakes. Well, the first thing he did is spill half of the box of pancake mix on the floor. The other half he got on there, he dropped the milk in the floor, he picked up what he could and he was scooping it into the bowl. And he set the bowl up on the counter and when he did, he turned around and the cat was up there licking inside the bowl. So he reached for the cat, and when he did, he knocked the bowl over, and it went into the floor, and it bust into a hundred pieces. And he sat down in the middle of the floor, and he had flour and eggs and milk all over him, wanting to do something that was very special for his parents. But he ended up messing it up. And he looked up, and he saw his father standing at the kitchen door just watching him. Well, Brandon thought for sure that he was going to get fussed out and get in trouble. But his dad walked over and picked him up in his arms and held him close and he loved him and told him, thank you for trying to make breakfast. Isn't that what our Heavenly Father does for us? He picks us up when we are the messiest and he holds us close and he said, I love you anyway. I pray today that you have thought about that thing in your life that has just been holding you down. Pray right now where you are and release it and let it go. Now I'm going to give you my phone number again in case you want to call and talk to me. It's 757-814-3739. Or maybe you've never accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior. I pray today that you will call me and that we can talk. And I love you very much. May God bless you. Father, we thank you for loving us. We thank you, Lord, for the forgiveness. And I pray that those who are out there today who, who, Lord, have been carrying guilt for so many years, that you just take it off of them even right now. Thank you, Father, that you restored Peter better than he ever was before. And he became a great church leader. God, use us too for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. In this time of uncertainty, Severin Church would like to remind everyone that you can still tithe on the church website, www.severinchurch.faith, or mail your tithe to Severin Church, 9066 Robins Neck Road, 
Gloucester, Virginia, 23061. Thank you for your generosity.